This film was made to demonstrate some of the clinical features seen in released prisoners of war and internees from Hong Kong and Singapore. During their captivity from 1941 to 1945, the prisoners had existed on a diet consisting mainly of rice, usually polished and frequently deteriorated from storage. In constant additions were dried fish, beans, peanut oil and chrysanthemum leaves. Nearly all suffered some deficiency symptoms, which occurred in a similar order, usually beginning within three months of imprisonment. Swelling of the ankles appeared first, followed by dimness of vision, an ataxic gait, paresthesia of the limbs, and in a few cases, nerve deafness. This patient demonstrates well the defective vision due to central scotometer, which was the usual finding. He can be seen to move the newspaper in a rotatory manner in order to dodge the scotometer and use the periphery of his retina. Both his discs showed partial optic atrophy and he also had macular degeneration which was not uncommonly associated with optic atrophy. The charts are typical of those in most cases and show bilateral small central scotometer. Scotometa were usually relative but occasionally absolute. Their situation was always central or paracentral and the peripheral field remained full. Visual acuity in most cases was reduced to 6 sixtieths or less in each eye. This man had again great difficulty in reading and his fundi showed bilateral partial optic atrophy. Although the onset of visual symptoms in most patients was gradual, some became almost blind in as short a shorter time as 48 hours. This shows the size of type the last patient was endeavouring to read. This man shows again very defective sight. Note the long distance away he holds the newspaper. The optimum focal distance varied from case to case. His fundi showed normal vessels with bilateral pallor of the temporal side of the discs and macular degeneration. In this man, optic atrophy was only one sign amongst many. In addition, he developed severe nerve deafness paresthesia of the limbs and foot drop. He can be seen here attempting to read a newspaper but requiring support to prevent his falling because of rhomboidism. When he stops using his eyes to orientate himself in his surroundings, he falls unless supported. This shows corneal scarring due to severe old corneal ulceration in the left eye, a normal right eye. Scarring of this degree was rare, but deficiency ulcers were common. The gait of the ataxic patients was very typical. They showed an exaggerated stamping and wide base gait, in some cases suggestive of hysteria. This sepoy shows well the exaggerated stamping and ataxia. He can be seen to be unsteady when he turns or bends down. He now shows ataxia and weakness of the legs and complete anesthesia of the stocking type. This man developed numbness and electric feet in 1942. This was followed by ataxia and bilateral foot drop. His condition remained stationary throughout the remainder of his imprisonment and on release he shows slight optic atrophy, anesthesia and loss of deep reflexes in the legs, weakness of dorsiflexes of the feet and as is seen here, a steppage and wide base gait. This man developed complete bilateral nerve deafness in 1943, hence the need for the deaf and dumb language. He also has bilateral stocking anesthesia to pinprick, bilateral foot drop, and as can be seen here, a high steppage gait with ataxia. These views showed two of the most ataxic patients walking together for mutual support. One shows the steppage and ataxic gait with foot drop, 
and the other a spastic scissor gait so exaggerated as to suggest hysteria. This patient shows only slight ataxia when walking, but becomes unsteady when he attempts to run. He has optic atrophy and rhomburgism, with only very little diminution of sensation to vibration and joint position, and no loss to pinprick. He received nicotinic acid and thiamine for two years in camp without any improvement. Note his lateral staggering as he approaches the camera. This and the following views show three patients being tested for rhomburgism. Loss of proprioceptive sensation was a common finding. Case two. Case three. We come now to a case which differed in many ways from the remainder. The onset was in the usual way, with defective vision, numbness of the legs, deafness and ataxia. Later, he developed difficulty in swallowing, a hoarse voice and precipitate micturition with nocturnal enuresis. His gait, as shown in these views, is a spastic scissor leg one, with exaggerated high stepping owing to foot drop. He has great difficulty in balancing as he has loss of all forms of sensation up to the nipple line and also the right side of his face. He has optic atrophy and nerve deafness. The whole condition suggests amyotrophic lateral sclerosis with sensory changes. This shows his strict movement to oppose index finger and thumb because of wasting of the intrinsic muscles of the hand. This shows the wasting of the palms and here the backs of the hands. He has general increase in deep reflexes and muscle tone. The right knee jerk, the left knee jerk. This shows a flaccid foot drop and a spastic foot drop. Note the difficulty in forced dorsiflexion in the last case compared with the normal. An absent knee jerk which was the common finding. This is an improvised foot drop spring produced in captivity by one of the patients. This shows the anesthesia to pinprick in one patient on his legs, but the normal sensation on his arms. Remedial exercises were given, not so much to increase muscle power, as to restore confidence and re-educate patients in balance and movement, despite the loss of proprioceptive sensation. As can be seen in these views, several of the patients have difficulty performing trunk turning without falling over. In addition to exercises, a high calorie value diet augmented with large doses of thiamine, nicotinic acid, riboflavine and marmite was given. Many patients had had vitamin therapy whilst in imprisonment. This had produced improvement during the early stages of the disease, but once fully established, no change had resulted. The results of treatment since their release have been on the whole disappointing. There has been subjective improvement and some of the grossly ataxic cases have learnt to walk better, but neurological signs have remained unchanged.